Hey, before we dive into today's video, I wanna thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed all of our live streams over the weekend. I'm so happy to get back to regular content. I wanna remind you that we're on our road to 150,000 subscribers, so I'd appreciate if you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And I want you to go down into the comments below and tell me the one game, just one. That's it, we, we talked about your dream lineups and your top five, just one game beyond all other games you really want in this Nintendo Direct. Just one, it's all you get, just one. What is it? And then tell me why, because the why to me is just as important as what the game is. June is a very exciting month, and today we get to talk about the possible fact that a Nintendo Direct date may have leaked through a third-party game and through a major website in GameSpot, but also through the actual official blog for the game. Quite fascinating, and I just want to just say it's been a really fun June month, whether it was the Xbox Showcase, Summer Game Fest, the Ubisoft event, Wholesome Game Director, all the events in between. I've really had a good time, and I know I've been live streaming a lot of it, so I do apologize to some of you guys for not getting out normal videos during that time, but we're back at our normal stuff today, and we have to talk about Among Us. Now look, I'm not a big Among Us player, but they are adding three new roles to the game, and those roles are dropping on June 18th. The problem is, there's no trailer, there's no event, there's no nothing, there's no announcement of it. Well, not officially anyways, well, actually, yes officially, but removed. Wait, what are we talking about? Well, GameSpot uploaded a trailer for Among Us and then instantly removed said trailer. Now, not quick enough that someone need to download it and re-upload it. We're not going to put it back up because we don't need to deal with copyright strikes, but it essentially announced three new things, three new roles for Among Us available right now. Now, you might go, well, what does that even mean? How do we know that this is June 18th? Well, there is a blog post that is was up for a second, is now down, is a 404 page. And what's important over here at Interslop, which are the developers and publishers of the game, is you look up here and it says, new roles enter the fray, 6-18-2024 emergency meeting. So what you're seeing here is that June 18th is when this update was supposed to drop. Now, why does any of this matter? Well, the biggest reason it matters is because Among Us has had announcements in prior directs. In fact, the very last direct in September of 2023, they announced a brand new map for Among Us in there. And there's a history of Among Us making announcements in directs. So while we don't know necessarily that June 18th is the day of the Nintendo Direct. It is a day that appeared to have a shadow dropped content update, and these sort of shadow drops with Among Us tend to be tied to events, whether it's Nintendo Directs, Xbox showcases, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, Sony already went, Xbox already went, Summer Game Fest already went, and this update wasn't in any of those events. So this would lead you to believe that this was going to be announced in a Nintendo Direct on June 18th. Now, setting that aside, some people might still hope that there is a Nintendo Direct tomorrow, right? We all want the Direct to be ASAP. So, you know, there was some rumors from somebody that it might be on Tuesday. Obviously, it's Tuesday. There's no Direct. That didn't happen. Uh, no rumors for Wednesday at all. But now, people are like, well, maybe tomorrow. Well, here's the thing. According to PH Brazil, who is, this is the guy who is at the forefront of all the Switch 2 delay rumors. Uh, put out here, there is no Nintendo Direct this week, end of the month, and as far as I know, the exact date isn't even certain yet. Now, that's as far as he knows. He's not saying there isn't a date, but just he's not aware of one. Now, remember, he did say there would be some sort of Direct or some type in April, and then he rescinded that, and that didn't happen. So, he's been right on Direct dates many years ago, but he's been kind of out of the loop on this stuff. But he did put some updates in context over on Family Boards. First, he said, don't look too much into it. And he's talking about his thing he said on Twitter. Last year's June Direct changed dates the week of. I have no idea why that happens, but it's happened many times before. Too many variables involved. And the reason why leakers rarely talk about specific dates anymore, he figures. Now, it is true that one of the people that usually gives us an idea, Nate the Hate, has basically said that he doesn't want to put anything out there. He's tired of people making videos and Kind of videos just like this, speculating on stuff. I don't know why it really bothers him as he sits there and speculates away on his podcast. But you know what? Everyone's different. And here's the thing. Brazil added a bit more context because this Kirby fan said, late June. Does that have to mean the last week of June? That's how I read it, which surprises me. I was really hoping for the next week. I didn't want to wait that long. Oh, well, we'll see soon enough. And he said, no, I just meant second half of the month. The 19th at the earliest is what... I would prepare myself for. Now, obviously, we just talked about June 18th possibly being the date. That's only one day earlier. That's on a Tuesday next week. 
So still, you know, you're over halfway through the month. So it still fits that latter half of the month, even though he's suspecting Tuesday is not a possible direct day. He thinks a Wednesday or a Thursday. And yeah, they haven't done a lot of Tuesdays. I think the last Tuesday they did was in 2021, I believe. So it's been a while since they've done it on Tuesdays, but it is possible a Tuesday, a Wednesday, or a Thursday. Those are the only days Nintendo's ever done directs on. So we'll just have to sit back and see what happens. And as I sit here and I ponder about this direct, there's a lot of things that I really want to get into. And one of these that I really want to get into is leaks, right? We all talk about leaks and rumors. We talk a lot about them here at the channel. And there seems to be, one, some negative attitudes around leaks that I don't quite understand, and I want to obviously dive into that. But there's also been a recent leaker who's been really popular over the last year with a near 100% track record in Midori who has chosen to step away. And Midori is choosing to step away at least for now, we don't know if she'll ever come back and leak things again, but she decided she's not going to leak anything anymore. And that is because some people at a certain forum have gone ahead and dug up personal information about her. Uh, essentially, they found out what Discord server she's on. They went to that Discord server. They found out who her actual in real life friends are on that server. And they started harassing those friends to try to essentially divulge who exactly Midori is. And that is a line that should not be crossed. Uh, regardless if you like leaks, hate leaks, or whatever, should never cross the line of trying to invade someone's personal life uh, who has obviously not wanted that personal life out there. She's not me, right? I have my name out there, Nathaniel Rumpeljans. You know, I have kids and a fiance and all this stuff. I'm very much a public person. And while Midori has a public persona, Midori has kept everything very, very private. And so this invasion of privacy and the harassment of in real life friends, that stuff is just crossing a line and just shouldn't happen. And uh, you know, I, I talked about this a little bit over on X because look, it, it, people cross the line with me all the time, even though I think I'm more prepared and accepting of it just because I've been in the public eye with my real full name since I was 12 years old, uh, working on websites. I didn't realize back then that maybe I shouldn't have used my full name. doesn't matter anymore. It's out there. And my big thing is uh, I've had a lot of things happen to me. I've had death threats. I've had satellite imagery of my house and my children's schools sent to me with some of those threats. I've had threats against my kids. I've had um, just lots of nasty stuff out there. Like you might see some of the negative comments and people like, you know, calling me a hack or, or that I'm fake news or all this other BS. That's all like really minor compared to some of the extreme stuff I've dealt with. And I've never really understood why people go to those extremes and wish harm on people. Uh, one of the last things I saw was actually at a certain forum. Someone was hoping I would have another heart attack. For those who don't know, I had one several years ago. Thankfully, I've lost weight since then, and I'm still on that journey right now. But point is they were wishing ill on me and that I have another one and I don't survive it. That's probably the last nasty comment or at least comment of that level that I have seen. So while Midori isn't maybe getting that level of harassment, at least not yet, people are definitely trying to invade her life that she's trying to keep private. So uh, I don't blame her for backing off. She's not going to vanish from the internet. She's just not going to leak things. And uh, look, maybe she will vanish if people don't stop harassing her and her friends and family. So uh, that that's just sort of sad there. Um, and then I just wanted to have this general talk about leaks. I know some people out there don't like leaks. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you're probably someone who does enjoy leaks for the most part, right? You, you know, leaks and rumors and all that you get that they're good fun. And, uh, you know, we have a policy at our channel where once a, a, a video game fully leaks online or something like that, we stop covering leaks because we don't support games being leaked on the internet early and all that piracy that happens before a game comes out. Right. We're not, like supporters of that will report when it happens, but we are not going to like report on what's uncovered from those leaks, right? At least not until after the game comes out. Like if there's a data mine and the game is now out and we learn something new about the game that we can't find within the game, uh, like what engine it's using and stuff like that. Sure, that stuff I think is worth reporting, but that's after the game comes out. At that point, it's not really a leak because the real game's out there and anyone can data mine. So, um, but I want to just point out that there are some people that get really happy about this. I've seen a lot of people celebrating that Midori is going to stop leaking things, which is really weird because Midori never really leaked a lot of specifics about games and didn't ever leak footage and, and all this weird stuff. It was mostly just like a game exists, right? Like, oh, hey, Kingdom Hearts 4. Yeah, probably won't come out till 2026. Okay. 
And uh, it's not like we have any news on Kingdom Hearts 4 anyways, right? Oh, man, you know, a new Zelda game named Edward exists. Like, okay, what does that even mean? We don't know. We just speculate away. But guys, there's a new Zelda game coming. There's a new Mario game coming. Did you know there's a new Persona game coming? It's like, yeah, these are ongoing IPs. Obviously, there's going to be new ones coming. It's not. It's fun to talk about and speculate on, but she's not really giving us the details, right? And that's a lot of the leaks we cover, actually. You know, I'll, I'll give an example of a leak that happened. This actually just happened last week and was proven to be true and really didn't ruin a damn thing. Uh, a giant list of games for the Xbox uh, showcase leaked online a few days before, and uh, that list turned out to be pretty much 100% correct. And guess what? It did not spoil the Xbox showcase one bit because you can have a list of game names, but what you don't have is the game itself. And so like there was a couple of game names in there. I saw I'm like, oh yeah, what is this uh, South game or whatever? Then I see it. And I'm like, holy crap, this game is blowing my mind. Oh, Expedition 33, who really, what the hell, who even cares about? And then you see the, the trailer for it, and you're like, whoa, now, Expedition 33 actually looks pretty damn cool. So, in the end, it ended up not really ruining the Xbox showcase, and that's sort of the leaks that I don't mind. If we think about what these showcases are, we think about what a Nintendo Direct is, they are marketing events. And the idea of the marketing events is to convince you, me, everyone else to buy your product and for the most part uh, a game leaking or a name of a game leaking or whatever some couple screenshots here and there that doesn't convince me one way or another to buy a video game so my purchasing decisions aren't spoiled by leaks or rumors sure you can be like well maybe the direct isn't as exciting because i know what the announcements are going to be okay and it's literally a marketing event so if you know what the announcements are and you're not excited by them or let's say you got rumors and you got hyped for a, a nintendo direct and then it turns out none of those rumors were true about said nintendo direct and you're like man that direct sucked you probably would have thought the direct sucked either way right uh the only people to really feel bad for is any sort of game developers that wanted their game presented in a certain way and then that ended up getting ruined uh, i do feel bad for those game developers and if that's the reason that maybe you don't like leaks that's cool but if the reason is just your own personal whatever like guys our job's to play and enjoy video games right no amount of leaks is going to tell me if i'm going to like a video game i i have to actually play the damn thing like star wars outlaws had a bunch of leaks going into all this stuff happening at summer game fest and at the ubisoft forward and the demo that people got to play and guess what despite that all the footage and everything else and the people talking about the demo was really excited and really hyped and all those leaks didn't ruin any of that for me and i'm someone now that's probably going to end up buying star wars outlaws unless there's a huge catch or a huge caveat that takes away the joy of the game and there might be because it's a ubisoft game so you don't know i mean microtransactions i just assume will be there if it's just of cosmetics i don't really care that much but we'll see it could be worse i just want to sit back personally and say that i understand if you're upset on behalf of the developers the ironic part here is that uh most leaks come from developers <laughs> i don't know if you guys are aware of this uh that's really how it works it's always from marketing teams who are the people responsible for marketing a game so they're actually just helping market the game i guess uh by leaking stuff or it comes directly from developers and i know a few developers and uh, look, only one time uh, that I could think of in the last 10 years has a developer I know actually been a little bit upset that something leaked out ahead of a full announcement. But even then, they were just like, whatever, it just built hype towards our announcement. And we hope that people feel good about the announced game and they like the gameplay. And if they don't, well, that negative feedback was going to be there regardless of whether things leaked out early or not. So the way that I just feel about this whole situation is fairly, fairly simple. I think that leaks are pretty much harmless outside of leaking the entire game. Uh, and if you are harmed and you want to feel bad on behalf of some developers that get upset by it, I totally understand. Uh, but I also want to remind you all that a lot of times how a game is shown and how a game is presented and when it's going to be revealed often isn't up to developers unless it's an indie dev. All these AAA developers, they bow down to the execs and the ceos and sometimes games are even shown when they shouldn't be shown i'll give you an example like when smash bros was announced uh before it was even in development that had to be a little awkward for sakurai to have a game announced that he wasn't technically even working on yet 
Um, very, very, very weird. And in hindsight, like, was the announcement of Metroid Prime 4 in 2017, was that actually, like, a good thing? Should Nintendo have done that? Uh, what about the Beyond Good and Evil 2? They showed that trailer, and I guess the game wasn't even technically in active development yet. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of these decisions are made by execs and marketing teams, uh, not by the actual people making the games. So, in the end, uh, you're not really typically hurting most developers based on uh, what I've talked to when this stuff happens. In fact, sometimes they actually get a little excited I've been told, seeing people get hyped for things that leaked out there, but they can't say anything about, but they know it's true. Like, hey, we know this game is coming. Hey, we know that feature's in the game, but we can't say anything about it. And yet, they're watching people get excited. Yeah, and can it be discouraging when people maybe get a little negative about something when they don't have the full context? Uh, yeah, that can be a little hurtful as well, but then sometimes the full context comes out and you see everything and then it all makes sense in the whole of the entire game and then the incentive turns around and that's that's nice to see as well, to see public perception change towards the positive. But, you know, for public perception that goes to the negative, it's probably going to go to the negative either way, right? Uh, and if you lie to gamers and make false promises, like Cyberpunk 2077 had some false promises for launch that weren't there, or No Man's Sky had false promises for launch that weren't there, you're going to upset people anyway. So, like, don't lie about things, right? That, that's just my general feedback to the marketing departments and the interview people. And I was like, don't lie about your games or overpromise what's not there. You can say, we hope to. Like, as an example, AG Alnuma, after Skyward Sword came out, did interviews where they said they wanted Skyward Sword to be open world, but they weren't in interviews before Skyward Sword came out promising that it would be open world or saying it will be or hinting that it can be. Uh, they said after it came out that that was something they wanted to do but couldn't do. Uh, so that let you know that, hey, they are looking at open world. Then A Link Between Worlds sort of really kind of went back to that in a little bit. And then, bam, we saw Breath of the Wild. So, yeah, we could see that build up towards what they were going to be doing with the future of Zelda. So, in the end, I got to say, I obviously don't mind leaks and rumors. I obviously like legit news even more. Obviously, we don't get a ton of it. Uh, there was a lot of surprise announcements to me over the, over the weekend and from Friday onwards. Just because it appears Nintendo Switch is getting more third-party developer support right now than it did at any point during its life. Uh, not just the Horizon LEGO game, but a huge swath of third-party games are coming to Nintendo Switch this year and next year. I find that just to be really fascinating that we're getting so many third-party developers in on Switch now. That also, to me, bodes really well for Switch 2 because if they're getting in on Switch now, it's probably because they're also going to be in on Switch 2 and they just want to get in on Nintendo's SDK and, and learn the ins and outs uh, you know, for all of their platforms moving forward. I mean, what happens if they put a game on Switch and Switch 2? You got you to kind of figure that stuff out. So, All right, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a fun one. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.